Welcome to Grey Overload, I'm Anthony, and is Google Stadia getting more attractive for gamers, or worse? Google Stadia hadn't asked me anything on Reddit, and where people in the community got to ask them questions, and they were answering, and it became really interesting really quick, and I was hoping that Google Stadia was going to be something I had I had my questions about, but I thought that this could be really good to expand on the potential gaming size of games overall, and that's always a good thing if you're a gamer, you want more people playing games, so hopefully developers and companies invest more into those games. And it became really interesting in here because one question I've always had is, is Google going to be able to keep this going? A lot of Google products over the years die off. You know, you have the Google products of the world, but then you also have the Google glasses of the world, right? The search engine is great. Everyone uses it. Gmail is great. Everyone still uses it. But then you have, you know, the glasses, you know, Google Plus, I can't keep forgetting all the products that there is. And th when you keep killing off products, there becomes doubt in consumers that you're going to be in it for the long haul. And that was one of my concerns as, you know, more and more companies tried to trim the bottom lines and keep their profits high for their investors. More and more customers are going to get more and more leery about, hey, is this actually going to be a viable product going forward? And basically the answer to that was uh, you get to take your metadata and your game saves with you um, great that's a little bit of a non-answer I think but it's basically saying me if we ever go away yes you will be able to do it I mean they gave a little bit more answer saying well it was the same thing when music first went on you know from CDs to uh, digital online I was weary about everything too but I think that's a little bit different Google a lot of your products in the past have died off and there is some question about that they also, uh, some people are saying that this you could be maybe having Netflix for games coming on, like kind of like uh, Xbox Game Pass. But they said no, it's going to be more like PlayStation Plus or Xbox Gold. So you get about a or you, like Xbox Gold. I have that, so that's two free or three free games a month or four, something like that. I get free games a month, so there's more than one. Uh, that's that, I know that for sure. Yeah, you just have to redeem them. But they said about a free game a month. What does that mean? Every five weeks you get a game? Every seven weeks you get a game? Every six? You know, what does that come out to? Uh, for the first three weeks you get a game, but then for the next stuff there's no game. And also you have to be subscribed in order to get those free games. Kind of makes sense. And so you can redeem those games. And if you were to ever stop your subscription, you, you I can't remember if you have access to them or not, but... If you then come back to the pro subscription, you get those games back that you got free before, just not any during that period where you weren't subscribed. So you have to be subscribed to get that for the pro subscription. You also need to be subscribed. If you're subscribed to the pro subscription, it is as well, you get a discount on games. So if you, Google Stadia is something you want to jump into and play your games on a cloud gaming system, the pro subscription is incentivizing there. Now, if there is no just free games, right? Uh, that was another question that was asked and or Nvidia. Google was going through and saying, no, no, this is a state of the art hardware you've access to. You have to buy your games and then you get a play on there. Uh, so that's what the free version is. If you want the free version, go and buy your games. You gotta go play them on Google Stadia. Now, you know, like I invest games on my PC or on the Xbox and right now Microsoft's kind of blurring those lines where they can be cross compatible. I hope Microsoft even does that more. That would be awesome to kind of more securely, you know, my purchases I've made on both over the time that it was worthwhile. But um, in Stadia, they don't really have that, right? You know, there's still some questions on what happens if I buy all these games? If, let's say I buy like 10 games at $60 a pop at $600. And now I want to move to a different platform. How do I do that? Is there going to be some cross compatibility that I can then get those, you know, games purchases over or do I have to purchase them all again? Granted, I've purchased games on the Xbox that I've already had on the computer and vice versa. Most of the time when I do that, it is because it's a crazy sale on Steam, uh, GOG, you know, the Microsoft Store, or something like the combination thereof, 
and I'm not paying full price, but I can see if you're buying full price, how this is something where you are going to be like, Hey, wait a second here. Like I like to have my games elsewhere or, or, you know, something that's established is a little bit different than something that, you know, is coming up and Google has a history of maybe not always sticking with this product. So, um, yeah, there, there are concerns there. I have some of them. Um, a few other things that they mentioned there is that family sharing will be coming, social, well, there'll be a whole social side of things, and they want to get it right. To me, that's saying that they're going to be monitoring what everyone's doing on there to be up to everyone else's guidelines of making sure they can only say certain things. Um, whatever, I don't really chat too much while I game. If, uh, if I am, I'm gaming with a friend, so it's you know a private chat between us rather than a whole group up out there. They will be supporting more devices, so that's a good thing. More devices will get support next year. They're also going to support um, different uh, controllers and stuff, so all HID devices will be supportive. So you can think, yeah, you get a dry steering wheel and stuff, that will eventually be supported as well. That's support of the HID devices, so that's a good thing, right? If Google wants us to take off, they're going to be need, need to be able to support different items to go of what people already have rather than, always going with their stuff so that's a really good thing uh there's going to be no bluetooth headphone support at start um at launch so i can see that coming which is a good thing and mod support that could be in the future as well as linking to steam they are they are open to it they kind of left it really open-ended and my guess is if it does happen, I could see a Steam thing happening down the line. Let's say Google's going to get out of the game of of actually streaming games, and they say, hey, Steam, let's create a partnership or somebody else. Here, let's have a way to transfer all the games over to your library so that you have those or even transfer them over at a discounted price so that that way you're not outraged at losing all your games because... You could also see it, or even in a scenario where you move someplace where there's not good internet. Still in the United States, where I'm at, um, I have internet, pretty good, pretty good, okay internet here, I would say, okay. Um, but if I go up to my parents, yeah, it sucks. So this streaming is not something that I would even do up there at this time, unless internet improves. So maybe if you move locations, let's see how that works. Let's Can I transfer my games over? Another question that was asked is the data used, like, how are you going to manage this? And Google kind of went on a spiel about, you know, how YouTube first got started and companies kind of grew into it and they improved on that and helped out the consumer. And I'm going, that's a little bit different scenario here, Google. Now we have companies that are trying to restrict us and how much data we use with data caps and they keep threatening with it. And, you know, you, not only do you pay for speed, you're paying for a data cap. I personally have a belief where you only should play for one, but that's a different video. Um, I think Google really needs to push on this. Google needs to push on, hey, I want to use your service for gaming. We're willing to help you do a certain build out, or we want you to push forward and kind of uh, alleviate these data caps. What can we do to help you out? I know that there's certain interconnect stuff they can do. You know, they can alleviate it. A lot of these, you know, we're using more and more data over time, but a lot of infrastructure, if it's a little bit upgraded here and there, they are making a profit on stuff that they could actually help leave you get into this and increase speed. And maybe Google can then, if Google is really serious about this, push that in the right direction and say, hey, we want this access to more people, especially here in the United States where there needs to be some of that. Um, I know other places in the world have way better internet access for a lot of their um, population where here it's in and out depending upon where exactly you live. Like if I move like literally I think it's like a mile away, I don't get good internet. I get junky internet. So just to be where I'm at, it's spotty. So they really did not answer, but they need to really push these companies like Charter, Comcast, you know, the direct Wi-Fi companies out there. Hey, let's get this going. Let's move it forward. That would be really great. And that's, you know, that's about all the major things that they didn't ask me anything. And it really came down to, and my first thing is, is this getting better for gamers or is this getting worse? And my first thought was worse. Some, I was really hoping that Google Stadia was going to be something that brought the community and included more people into it. 
I still think that that's happening, but I think the group of people that that is including is shrinking. Um, yeah, I mean, if I was there and I saw a game trailer or something like that on YouTube and they were talking about this, let's go try it out. Let's do a little free game, right? Trial period. Bam. If I like the game, okay, let's buy it. I think that would be a great segue into it. And maybe that's still coming. You know, I would probably even buy the game on computer or Xbox first to be, you know, upfront about that and just my views. But can they do something else where it makes it incentivizing for them to actually stay with the service and use the service is going to be crucial. And getting these things ironed out and getting a message out there that's cohesive, that people understand, is going to be even um, more crucial. And I think some of the marketing stuff they're doing is a huge slip up. If you're a hardcore gamer, Google right now is not putting this in a light that you even really want to try it, I feel like. I feel like they're making this as your system that you game on, your console that you game on is where you want to game. And that's not really what Google needs to have more customers that are using Google Stadia. And I think that they really need to work on their messaging of this and how to include more people in the gaming so that they really want to go and, hey, this is a place where I can go play games with you know, friends and everything else on social. I believe at first they're probably not going to have too many cross-platform stuff. They did mention something a little bit about cross-platform. But in order to grow a service, you're going to need some of your own content, some of your first-party systems. And that's going to take time. Like you know, I like to see Google buy a studio or something to see how committed they are. At this time, it really seems like they're, let's try this out, let's see how it works, and maybe eventually we'll get there to something that people want to use. And that's the scary part. Microsoft is coming hard with their cloud gaming stuff. And if I could, don't even have to use their cloud gaming stuff, but I can, let's say they enable cloud gaming from my desktop or my Xbox to my phone or something like that. And I can get a little bit better internet and like with my parents that I don't need something, you know, that works just fine out from off my own internet connection with my own hardware. That is a way more attractive option for me and maybe a lot of other people out there for the gaming world. So Time will tell us see how this is going to go. I, I bet you PlayStation with what they have and some of their streaming stuff, they're going to be pushing hard to kind of clamp down on this and keep their corner of the market. And I think Google's going to run into a, a few issues here going forward because of how disjointed their marketing is, how disjointed they're kind of getting out this message. And every single time they come out and they talk about Stadia, it's getting less attractive for me, and I'm thinking a lot of other people out there that were looking at their servers and hoping to grow the community, and it looks like it's for a smaller and smaller group of people than what I initially thought. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below about this whole Google Stadia thing. Where do you fall on the spectrum of things? Do you a gun hole about it and say, yeah, this is the future of gaming? Or are you thinking that now there's more combination of stuff that other stuff is out there? And maybe Google Stadia is not the path forward. So I like you. Thank you for watching. I got some good stuff. I just got some hardware in. So I got some 3400Gs. I'm, I got a, I'm upgrading that little system I built. I probably won't record that because I really want to get the hardware in right now. But I have another system I have to build for my parents. I promised them a computer. And so I bought a 3400G for them. I got a Seasonic Focus uh, 80 plus gold here. 10 year warranty on it a 550 watt a little bit overkill for a 3400g but you never know and right now the Corsair mp510 is in so that's all that came so far you know shipping comes at different times here but it's going to be kind of fun to see how these systems go 3400g is on the 12 nanometer process a little bit higher boost clocks and i believe they're soldered now so this is going to be some fun stuff. I'll probably do a little comparison with the 3400G and the 2200G of the coolers because um, there are different height difference. So if you're building a motherboard, just be conscious of that too. So I might do a little thing of some unboxings here coming up. And I'm excited for some new hardware and getting into computers and building some computers for people and, you know, so that they can have better systems in their house as well. So let me know if you have any uh, comments or things that you'd like to see with those things as well. Um, I'm getting a gigabyte motherboard. I'm actually upgrading that little mini system a little bit more. I got a uh, five MP510 two terabyte for that system, as well as a 14 terabyte uh, Seagate with the helium filled. So just to help that out. And what there's a gigabyte motherboard coming. There's something else coming too. 
I'm blanking on it, but um, yeah, I had some extra memory here. I upgraded the memory in this Threadripper system to make sure it was utilizing the quad channel stuff. Some Corsair Vengeance, and that's working really great in 3200 on the 399. So yeah, let me know if you got any questions with that as well. But I do want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing and sharing the video as well. I really appreciate the guys, what you guys do to help this channel grow. It's awesome, and I really do appreciate it. Until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.